Hi, welcome Hegemony 3 Modders to episode number 4 in our series on rebuilding the ancient Macedonia map from Hegemony Gold. Today we're going to get into uh, how to place trees and uh, grass on the map. So to get started we'll switch into the tree mode in the top right here. Using the selection tool you can see we can uh, highlight the base of the trees here. Now we can draw new ones, uh, selecting them from our list on the right. You can see they've been sorted based on some of our older games, but you can actually mix and match them as much as you want. You will run into some performance problems if you have too many different types of trees in the same place, but there are uh, no hard limits on it. So if you select a tree there, hit the draw tool, shortcut 7, and we can left click and start creating trees. Now like uh, some of the other the prop modes and other ones we've worked on in the past, you can also use the move and rotate tools. Select them and drag them around. And rotate. You can do them all as a group. And you can also scale them up, bigger or smaller if you want. Now because we get so many trees on the map, the uh, map from Hegemony 3 had roughly uh, 100,000 trees across it. One of the uh, quick shortcuts we use a lot is to group select trees, control C to copy them, and then control V to paste them somewhere else. Now you can see because train drag up here on the right is checked, as I move these along, they adapt to the uh, height of the train, which makes it easy to uh, move one forest from a uh, one cliffside to another. However, there are some cases, and if I scroll over here a little bit, you can uh, find it where you actually don't want them to stick to the train. If you remember from our last episode where we got into props, we often use um, extra cliff or rock meshes where we want um, more pronounced features on the train. So these ones here are cliff props. In order to get trees on top of those, we actually need to bring them above the base of the map, which would normally be down here. And we drag those up, and with train drag off, we can slide them into place to make them look like they're on top of this uh, cliff top. But otherwise, you generally want to keep the uh, train drag feature on. Now one of the other features of the trees, if you remember from last week, we were getting into uh, setting the construction levels for props. So we go back to the city, we uh, set this uh, tall house to level 4, which is the, uh, tied to the population level of the city. Now if we set our test level down to 3, that means that building hasn't been constructed yet. So to fill in the space, we often uh, put some trees in its place. So if I select that tree here place a couple of those. I'll try to select those. Now their level by default is 13, which is above the uh, top level of the city, so it means they'll be there all the time. But if I use page up and page down to uh, drop those down to level 3, one below what the building is, and we go back up to level f the uh, test level 4, you can see the trees collapse and our uh, building gets built in its place. Now one small tweak, you can see the roots still appear slightly above the ground there, so I can select that tree and just drag it down a little bit more, so you can't see it. And we can go back and forth. So that's what the trees there before, and when you upgrade your city, the trees will collapse and you'll get your building. That pretty much is all there is to uh, trees, so we're going to move on to the grass mode. So when I select that, you'll quickly see some of the area we've already defined the grass. Now because grass is generally only visible when you're really close to the map and it's hard to edit like that, we have this overlay which shows a uh, different color for each type of grass that's painted in a certain area. So unlike trees, you don't place grass um, individually piece by piece. You just paint where you want that grass to appear and the game as you uh, move around automatically fills in the, uh, the individual plants. So you can see different types. The, uh, the white squares show that there's some rocks placed here. The purple ones, there's uh, lavender plants, and the orange ones have a different type of grass. So these gets drawn pretty much uh, the same way. On the right we have a list of different um, grass types that are defined. So the top one with asterisks are individual types of plants. So if we go to these juniper shrubs, for example, hit the draw tool 7, a slightly smaller brush, we can paint in and we get a whole patch of those juniper shrubs. Now when you've got, uh, when you're drawing one particular one, you can right click as well, and that'll erase just that type. Or you can go to erase, 
and it'll erase whatever is under the brush. Now in addition to uh, painting individual types, somewhat like the train painting, we have um, fancy brushes that adapt to the train type underneath, which includes both what's painted on it, the slopes, and includes some random features as well. So if we pick uh, the Latium Field Brush, for example, we get a big brush now. If we paint that across here, you can see it uh, automatically excludes different um, train texture types, drops in the uh, lavender plants and stones randomly. And so that makes it really easy to uh, paint large sections of train quickly. And if we go to the forest ones, those are usually uh, thicker brush because you're not supposed to walk through those areas. So we can paint that over here. And you can see it automatically excludes the rock textures and higher slopes. You get a taller grass there, and the shorter grass in the fields. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, there is a, uh, unlike the trees, there is a bit of a limit on how many uh, types of grass you can have in one area. Um, but uh, usually you want to limit it as much as possible just for performance reasons, uh, long before you'll hit the, uh, the technical limit. All right, thanks for joining us. That was a, a quick episode this week. And uh, next week we're going to get into actually making the map playable and how to define the scenario, factions, and, uh, and everything else that's necessary. All right, thanks for joining us.